Okay, so today is Tuesday, September 10th. This is a frequently asked questions answer to Alan Lindale. A question you might clarify, he says. In swarms, is the queen ejected because she's bad? Or is the colony thriving? So what I'm going to show you here is a swarm of bees, of course. What happened? We're just going to answer a lot of general questions about bees here. They have landed on the spruce tree, and this happened, of course, today, September 10th. Late in the year, this is a large swarm. We're going to talk about why bees swarm in the first place. So they've obviously come from a healthy colony. Although, let me throw a monkey wrench in that. If the conditions inside the colony that they're living in are not good, bees have a tendency to get nervous and to swarm out of it. Also, if the queen that is laying eggs in that colony begins to lay sporadically, starts to lay less frequently, or in some way doesn't please the colony workers, specifically the nurse bees, they are going to get rid of that queen. How do they do it? Well, they'll start building supersedure cells. Supersedure cells are queen cells that are built out of the face of a brood comb normally. Now, what's the difference between that and a swarm cell, which is for a queen? Swarm cells are generally on the edges of the brood frames. And that would be your healthy reproductive behavior of the colony. So it is healthy for bees to swarm. What we're looking at here is not the end of the world. Sure, it's late in the year. That's not great. Their chances are not good. When you hive them up, you're going to have to feed them. But how did we get here? Why are they swarming? What's going on? You hear a lot of beekeepers talk about, specifically beginning beekeepers. How do we keep my bees? How do I keep them from swarming? What happened? What's wrong? Nothing is wrong. Bees are supposed to swarm. If you have a healthy animal, no matter what the species is, it is designed to reproduce. What we're looking at here is healthy reproduction of a bee colony. So the old queen departs. The new queens have not yet hatched inside the colony. So in the hive, there would be queen cells already constructed and there would be developing queens in those cells already and they do not hatch before the old queen is driven out. So also what happens while those new queens are developing inside their queen cells, the old queen, the existing queen, is being pushed around by the nurse bees and they're holding back on some of her feed. Remember, the queen is fed and groomed and cared for by nurse bees inside the beehive. So they stop caring for her. They stop feeding her. Why? Well, she has to lighten up so she can fly. And in the meantime, while she's lightening up so that she can fly, plus they chase her around and stop her from laying eggs. So when you have a queen that's about to depart and a colony that's about to swarm, you might see fewer eggs. You will still see open brood if you're lucky and plenty of capped brood because a good queen departing in a healthy way leaves a lot of capped brood and replacements behind. How many of the bees are we looking at here? This was obviously a big colony. We're looking at about 10 pounds of bees here. Thousands of bees. What's this swarm composed of? Well, I can see that there are lots of drones, male bees, so they're bringing their reproductive genetic stock with them. There are the workers, lots of old workers in here too. You'll notice they're older because you're going to see that their wings are tattered, that their fuzz is worn off of their thorax, and that they've really seen a lot of foraging activity and worked hard for the queen that they've left with. Now they've also loaded up on resources. Look at the abdomens. First there's the head, then the part that the wings are attached to. We slowed it down here for your viewing pleasure. The part that the wings are attached to is the thorax. That's where all the muscle is. That's where all the energy is generated. And then there's the abdomen. Look at the abdomen on all of these worker bees. Fully extended. Why? Because they filled their honey crops before they left. They gorged on the stored resources inside the hive they departed from. They need that, number one, so they can stay warm and survive. It's going to rain. We have cold nights right now, dropping down into the 40s Fahrenheit. 
And they need to keep the queen warm and preserve her while they do what? Well, they're going to send out scouts everywhere. How far do the scouts fly? Sometimes several miles. They're looking for a cavity, a suitable cavity for the swarm to move into. And when they do that, what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to build comb. And they're going to have to have honey resources. And they're going to have to have pollen so they can start with brood. So you will see workers in here with pollen on their legs. You'll see drones, which are the male genetic stock that go with them in case other things happen and they fail. Let's say the queen died. Let's say the colony failed. The drones, for as long as they can, will continue to fly and search for a reproductive opportunity with a virgin queen from another colony. This is how bees guarantee their existence. They have to reproduce. They're not designed to just move into a box and spend their lives in that box and never depart. Honeybees, as a superorganism, have to reproduce, and that's what we're looking at here. This is the old colony, and I know that sounds backwards. The old colony, you might think, exists in the box that they left, but that's actually the new colony. The old colony has departed. Out with the old, in with the new. So the new colony is behind, the new queens will hatch out, and that doesn't bother me. You know why? Because a queen that's less than a year old going into winter with lots of resources has a very good chance of surviving our northeastern United States winters. And here again, we've slowed this down a lot. This is at 20% normal speed. And it's so that you can see the bees that are flying around, they are still joining the cluster. See that one landed right there on the right? And they're just flying up and attaching themselves. They're homing in on that pheromone. And so they're going to tighten up. The cluster is going to quiet down. And the bees are going to pack very tightly together. And of course, they're just clinging to one another. So the bees that are closest to the branch, and in this case, it's a fir tree, those are the ones supporting the rest of the colony with their little toes hooked onto bits and pieces of the tree branch. For some reason, they like this spruce tree. We catch several swarms off of it. And you can see that these bees are actually very healthy. They're all well fed. They're flying well. And guess what else? They're not threatened. Often you'll see people find a cluster of bees on a fence post or a tree or a bush in their yard. And someone will rush out there like a hero and spray them with insecticide. So one of the things I would like to explain for those who are not beekeepers who might be looking at this and wondering what a swarm of bees is all about, they are non-defensive. They have nothing to defend and they have everything to save. They want to save their resources. Every bee that stings someone is a dead bee. So that's a loss to the colony. So obviously they don't want to sting for no reason. Obviously, if you put your finger on one and push it and force your hand, they would have to sting you. But I'm standing right next to this one, making this video. And now, of course, we're in another slow motion mode, but I am not protected. I don't have gloves on. I don't have a bee suit. Why? Because this is a swarm of bees looking for a new home. They are migrating and not defending their position. And you can see here that this is in several clusters. So they've all clumped onto different branches in this tree. And you can see that they're all climbing. And this is in slow motion. So you can see that they're all moving up and following this trail. They're following the pheromone from the Nasanoff gland of the bees. And they're following the pheromone of the queen. So eventually, even though there are several clusters on this tree in different little groups, if you ran up and tried to bag them all individually, that would be a lot of work and uh, not necessary. They are going to combine into one central cluster and then by tomorrow morning they will be tightly packed and easy to collect. So instead of collecting them now we're making this video. And you can see that these are workers. Worker bees are females. And you can see by their head shape and their body size that uh, they are different from the drones. And when you see a drone there's one right there dead center. Large eyes that come completely together. It's much bigger. For you see the shiny black abdomen just below my finger there. Oops. My finger went right into the swarm cluster. 
By the way, this is not a brave move. This is not a bold move. This is not a gutsy move. Honeybees in a swarm cluster, as I mentioned, are non-defensive. Why am I touching these bees with my bare hands? Because I want to give you a visual example of how non-threatening they are. I don't want you to rush out and, of course, touch the bees in the way I am, but I also don't want you to be afraid when you see a cluster of bees in your yard and they're in a tree or a bush. They are not wanting to sting you. Remember, they're saving all the resources they have. They're trying to bring them with them, and they're going to start a new home somewhere else. Now, the perfect size home for this group of bees right here, this swarm, would be a single 10-frame deep Langstroth box with a solid bottom, inner cover, and a telescoping cover. And then they would have to be fed. This time of year, they would be fed sugar water, 50-50. The good news is, we also have a strong nectar flow on. The asters are just beginning to come in. The goldenrod is still strong. Their greatest protein source is pollen, and the pollen is coming in heavy. So even though it is September 10th, which is late in the year, where I live, the resources are going to continue for several weeks. So this collection of bees has a great chance of surviving, actually. Why? Well, because there's so many of them. If this were a tiny cluster, they wouldn't have enough bees to warm brood once they start that and provide foragers to bring in more resources. So if you've got a cluster of more than 5,000 bees, and this cluster easily is more than 5,000 bees, you've got enough bees to start a healthy colony. Now, once they get in their box, they're going to go straight to work. If you have a box with drawn out comb, then they're way ahead because that means they can start bringing in pollen resources, nectar resources, and the queen can start laying right away. If they find a wild cavity, chances are that cavity was inhabited before by other feral bees. And then they would likewise be able to move into that and maybe take over some abandoned comb that's in there. And then they would have a fast start. So they have enough bees to provide forage, resources for this colony. They have enough bees to stay inside the colony and provide warmth and protection for the brood when the queen starts to lay her eggs. Now once they get into that new box, how long will it be before they're hatching out new bees and replenishing their stocks? Well, if there's already drawn out comb and resources where they're going, we're looking at 21 to 30 days before you start seeing new adult bees emerging from their cells. So do we have that much time left? Here we are September 10th, October 10th. They would be hatching out at maybe 1,300 to 1,500 new bees a day. And I think their chances of surviving winter in that circumstance would be good. So here they are. And all I wanted to do is show you what a swarm looks like. Caution you that swarms should not be killed. Please don't call an exterminator and have them sprayed. Call a beekeeper. If you're not a beekeeper yourself, then I hope that this video will serve to calm you down a little bit. People fear what they don't understand. And what I want you to understand is that honeybees are just on the move. Swarms are natural reproduction. And personally, I don't feel that swarms should be stopped all the time. Now, sometimes bees will swarm because they don't have enough space inside their hive. They can be honey bound. The population could grow too big, the beekeeper may not have added enough boxes, or you may want your hive to be a specific size and not any bigger, and you may want to allow swarms to happen. For many years, I allowed swarms to happen as part of my research on honeybee swarm behavior. So now when they swarm, I don't always see it as a bad thing. I see it as an opportunity to learn, and in this case, to teach and share what a swarm looks like and what it really is. How long will they hang here? They could actually hang on this tree for several days. Their goal, of course, is to send out their scouts in every direction, for those scouts to come back, do their waggle dances, encourage other bees to go and check out the spaces that they found, and then they will all collectively pick a spot to move to. It's part of the honeybee democracy.
If you haven't read that book by Thomas Seeley, I highly recommend it because it shows how the social order of bees works, how there's a consensus, how just one bee doesn't get to fly out, find a place to live, come back, tell the others, and they all leave. This uh, swarm of bees will wait until many foragers come back with the same information, with the same approval of the space that they hope to occupy. And once there is a consensus throughout the swarm, then they will all depart all of a sudden. How fast does the swarm travel when they leave and go to a new location? About six miles an hour. So if you can jog six miles an hour and there aren't a bunch of buildings and trees and hedges and rivers between you and where they're headed, you can actually track them and keep up with them. How long does a queen live? Why do they get rid of her? Well, I can tell you for sure. The queen that's in this group is not even a year old because all of my queens were replaced in the early summer this year. So she's young. And they could live three years, but in general, going into our winters here, you want to go into winter. I'm not a queen breeder. So I want to go into winter with a queen that's under a year old. So I'm going to close out with this slow motion sequence. I hope you learned something about honeybee swarms, why they swarm. Sometimes it's healthy. Sometimes it's because the queen is not performing. Otherwise, it's just normal reproduction. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more. Have a great week.